In this example, we're going to take the vector file that we created in a previous drawing session and we're going to look at creating the toolpaths for the Gothic quatrefoil panel that you can see here. We'll be showing you how to use fairly basic toolpaths here, so we'll be looking at profile toolpath, pocket toolpath and the v-carving toolpath to create this rather complex looking cutout. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the Gothic Quatrefoils project folder, we're going to open the Gothic Quatrefoil vector drawing file, press open, and these are the vectors that we created in the previous drawing session. Now when we created these vectors, we also looked at organising them onto various layers. So if we just go to our layer bar at the top here, you'll see I have four different layers. We've got outline shape, top and bottom grooves, falls and v-carved shapes. So let's just quickly look at all of those individually. So we've got our outline shape, we've got the top and bottom grooves, we've got the foils and we've got those v-carved shapes. To begin with, we're just going to look at the foils layer. Okay, so we want to make that the active layer, so we're just going to click on that so it's now bold and we can work with that. So let's just go click into the white space and now we're ready to begin creating our toolpaths. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab, so we're using this icon here and that will open up the toolpaths tab and just undraw the drawing tab on the left hand side. So the first thing that we must do before we go ahead and create any toolpaths is to go over our material setup. So let's use the set icon here. Okay, so the material thickness we're working with is one inch in this case, our XY date and position. Okay, so to draw everything up we had it in the centre. Now for the toolpath side of things I want to change this so it's now in the lower left hand corner there. We're going to set the Z0 off the material surface and we can come down here, check over our rapid Z gaps above the material, our clearance and plunge and then our home start position. I might just want to change that Z gap above the material to say 0.5. So you just want to ensure that your clearance, plunge, home start position are all well out of the way of any clamps that you might have holding down your material. Once you're happy with that, you could go ahead and press OK. So the first toolpath we're going to look at is the pocketing toolpath. Well, we're going to pocket between this outer circle vector here and the inner quatrefoils that we have here. And we're going to do the same for all three of these circles and quatrefoils. So let's select the circle, shift and select the inner quatrefoil, and we'll select those as well. So hold and shift to do a multiple selection there. And with those vectors selected, we can now go into the pocket toolpath. So the first thing that we need to specify are our cut depths. So the start depth, we're going to start this off the top of our material block, so that's going to be at zero. Then the cut depth, this is how far down we want our pocket to cut into our material. And in this case, I'd like to cut down a value of an eighth of an inch. So we're just going to type that in there, so 0 0.125. And we come over to our tool section. You can see at the moment I've got a quarter inch tool, so I can use the select option if I wanted to choose a different tool. I'm actually quite happy at using the quarter inch tool in this case. I'm just going to select that, to glance over the settings that we've got here, ensuring that they're safe for what I'm doing. Let me choose how we clear that pocket, whether that's in an offset or a raster strategy. In this case, we're going to use the offset strategy. Then we could give that a name, so I'm going to call this one Pocket Circles. And then we could just simply press Calculate. And so the software has opened the preview toolpaths form. We can see our toolpath visible here in the 3D view. And then we could use the preview selected toolpath option to actually simulate that part being cut out. So you can see that pocket coming down an eighth of an inch deep. Okay, so I like the way that looks. Let's just put that in Z and we'll go ahead and press close. Okay, what I'd like to do now is actually tile my windows horizontally. That way I can see my vectors along with my preview in the 3D view. So to do that, let's use this icon here, tile windows horizontally. Then we have the 2D at the top and we've got the 3D view at the bottom there. 
Now what I'd like to do is create a profile on the inside of these outer circle vectors that we've got here just to give it a bit of decoration. So what I need to do is I'm just going to hold down shift and I'm just going to select the inner quatrefoil that we've got here to deselect it. I'm going to do that for all the quatrefoils so we're just left with the vectors that I need for my profile pass. So with those vectors selected let's go over to the profile toolpath Okay, so the first thing we need to do is specify our cut depths. So the start depth for this is actually going to be an eighth of an inch as we've already cut down an eighth of an inch into this pocket. And you'll see at the bottom highlighted there that the Z is saying 0 0.125. Okay, so we need to make sure that, that is our start depth. So 0 0.125 in there. Cut depth, we're going to go down another eighth of an inch. I'm just going to type that in there tool we're going to use, we're going to use this quarter inch end mill, so I'm just going to keep that selected. Machine vectors, we're going to machine on the inside, so it cuts inside of those circles that we've got selected there. Come down to the bottom and then we can give that a name, we're just going to call this one Profile Outer Circles and we could go ahead and press Calculate and we can see that toolpath there in the 3D view and then if we go ahead and preview that toolpath we can take a look at how that looks. Okay so nice bit of decoration there, nice border for that circle. Put that in Z and then we'll just close that preview toolpath form down. So now I'd like to create a similar toolpath using a different tool for the outer vectors of these trifoils and the outer vectors of these quatrefoils that we've got here. Now as we know we've already cut down an eighth of an inch here where the actual quatrefoil vector lies and so because of this I'm going to have to create two separate toolpaths. So one for the four trifoils where we start the top of the block at zero and then one for the three quatrefoils where we need to consider that eighth inch that we've already cut away. Okay, so let's just select all of the outer trifoils, holding down shift to select those. And then we could come over to the profile toolpath. So the start depth for this is going to be zero. As I said, it's off the top of the material there. So that's going to be at zero. Cut depth, we're going to cut down a quarter of an inch this time. Okay, then we're going to choose a tool. So I'm going to use the select option to open up the tool database. Now I'd like to use a half inch ball nose in this case. So if I come to my ball nose section, you can see I don't actually have a half inch ball nose. So I need to create a new one. So I'm just going to take this one inch ball nose here. I'm just going to copy that. And then here I'm just going to change the name of that. So it's now half an inch. And then here we're going to change that to half an inch in there. So for the pass step for this, we're just going to change that to a quarter of an inch, check over the other settings, apply that and now I've created my new half inch ball nose tool. So we could go ahead and press OK. Okay, So here we need to choose which way we machine the vectors, outside, inside or on. Now we're going to machine inside of these vectors, so we're going to use the inside option. I'm not going to go over any of these advanced options, I could just give that a name, we're going to call this one profile trifoils. Go ahead and press calculate. We can see that we can see the toolpath there in the 3D view. And then if we go ahead and preview that toolpath, we can take a look at how that looks. Okay, so you can see we've got nice scalloped edge around these trifoils. Okay, so I like that. Let's just put that in Z. And then we're going to do a similar process for the outer vectors for the quatrefoils. So let's just close that preview toolpath form down. I'm just going to select the outer quatrefoils this time. Again, go back into the profile toolpath. So next we need to specify our cut depths. Now it's easy for us to say that we want our start depth to be at an eighth of an inch as we've already cut away the eighth of an inch using that pocket toolpath that we did earlier. 
Now we need to be careful here as the actual shape of this quatrefoil in the centre of the circles has not yet been cut into and so we don't want to be plunging down an eighth of an inch into that with our tool. So to overcome this what we're going to do is we're going to set our cut depth to be a quarter of an inch that's how far down I actually want to cut into this part but then I'm going to plus the eighth of an inch that we've already cut into and then press equals so we're going to do a total cut of 0.375. Okay, we're going to use the same tool that half inch ball nose going to machine on the inside there I'm going to give our toolpath a name so we're going to call this one profile quatrefoils and I could go ahead and press calculate so there we can see the toolpath and then if we go ahead and preview that toolpath we can see what that looks like okay so I like what we've got there so let's just put that in Z okay so the last two tools that we've used have been the half inch ball nose and I'd like to use this for the top and bottom grooves also so it makes sense for me to just switch layers and run that same tool so they're next to each other in my tool list this just makes it easier for me to select them when it comes to saving out the tool pass to one file as we're making use of the same tool so let's just close out of this preview we're going to go to our layers list here I'm going to switch off the foils, switch on top and bottom grooves, make that the active layer. We'll just click into the white space to come out there. And so what I'd like to do is run that half inch ball nose in the centre of this box. So it probably makes more sense for me to actually draw a line uh, along the centre of these two rectangles that we've got here. So let's just go back over to the drawing tab. So just going to switch back over there and we're just going to maximise the 2D view and we'll just zoom to fit there. I'm going to go into the polyline tool and I'm just going to snap to the centre there. So you can see that blue horizontal line, that's because I've got object bound switched on. So it's picked up the centre of the rectangle that we're currently hovering over. So I can click there and I can just draw a line like so and press spacebar just to temporarily come out there do the same for this rectangle here so again I can see the center of that object looking at that blue line and I could just snap to the right hand side there and then right mouse click just to come out of the polyline tool so with those lines created we'll take our half inch ball nose and we'd run that along the bottom here and the top here along these lines to create the top and the bottom grooves now if we go to our layers bar switch on the outline shape I'm just going to select that outline vector so this vector represents the outline the actual overall shape of the part that we're going to cut out and so you'll see we may encounter a problem here if we keep our lines as they are where we're going to run this tool we're going to be left with a radius we don't want that radius of the tool visible so what we're going to do is we're going to look at overextending the line so it goes past the actual edge of our part just so that we eliminate the radius of that tool being visible in the cutouts for the top and the bottom groups. So let's go back to the layer manager here. I'm just going to switch off the outline shape and then we're just going to take this vector here, shift and select this vector here, select them again to put them into transform mode. Then I'm going to hold down shift whilst selecting the outer handle here and I'm just going to drag that out a little so we can see we've overextended that line on all sides. So now that those vectors are ready we can switch back over to our toolpaths tab. With those vectors selected let's go into the profile toolpath. Start depth is going to be at zero on the top of the material. Cut depth we're cutting down a quarter of an inch going to use that half inch ball nose again. This time we're going to machine on the vector okay so we're doing it exactly on the vectors that we've just created there and then we could just skip some of these advanced options give that a name we're going to call this one profile top and bottom and then press calculate and you'll see it's created the two lines there and then we could go ahead 
and preview that. So you can see the nice scalloped shape of that line in there. Okay, so I like what we've got there. Let's just put that in C. Then we could close that down. Again, let's go and tile our windows horizontally using that icon there. And now we could start to think about doing some VCOV toolpaths. So let's go over to our Layers tab. It's just going to switch off the top and bottom grooves and we're going to switch on the VCOV shapes. And to make sure that that's the active layer by selecting it, you can see it's now bold, it's now the active layer, and we'll just click into the 2D view there. So looking at these vectors, I can see we face the same issue that we had with the trifoil and the quatrefoil. For example, these vectors that we've got here sit within the circle that we've already pocketed down an eighth of an inch. So I need to bear in mind that area that we've already cut down. Now the vectors that run along the top, the bottom and in the centre here all lie on the actual material surface. So we're going to look at creating the VCARV toolpath in two separate toolpaths. So one that will sit along the pocket and the others that are on the material surface. So to help ourselves out, let's just group those vectors into the relevant toolpaths. Okay, so to select multiple vectors, one way of doing this is I could simply click and drag up in the left direction and anything that touches my selection box will be selected when I let go of my left mouse key. Okay, we'll do the same again over here for these vectors here, except this time I'm also going to hold shift as I want to add them to my selection. You see I'm just touching them and they're selected. Do the same over here and they're selected. Now that I've got those vectors selected, I can press G on the keyboard to group them. Another way for me to select vectors is dragging a box in the opposite direction. So this time we're just going to go down towards the right hand side and anything within that box will be selected. So what I need to do here is just simply hold down shift, select that group we just created there to deselect that and then press G on the keyboard to group those vectors. Okay, so we've got two sets of vectors that we're going to look at creating two separate VCOV toolpaths. So with these vectors selected, let's go over to our VCOV toolpath and then we need to specify our cut depth. So we know our start depth is going to be an eighth of an inch. We choose a tool, so use the select option and then take a look at our V bits. Now in this case it is the 90 degree one and a quarter inch V bit that I want to use here. Check over the settings again if you're going to cut this ensure it's safe and appropriate for your particular application and then we could go ahead and press OK. Okay we'll give this one a name so we're going to call this one VCARV Inner Shapes and then we could go ahead and press calculate can see that there, and then we could preview that toolpath. You can see we've got a really nice effect there. Let's just put that in Z, and then we'll close that down. This time we're going to select the other vectors that we want to VCARV. We're going to go into the VCARV toolpath. This time the start depth is going to be at zero because we're doing it off the material block here. And to use the same tool. Now you could use the edit option just to refresh yourself over those settings if you want to do. And then we'll give this one a name and we're going to call this one VCARV Outer Shapes. And then go ahead, press calculate. You can see them there in the 3D view. And then we could go ahead and preview that. Okay, so that looks good. I like what we've got so far. So let's just put that in Z. So now all we need to do is run our cutout pass. So let's go to the layer manager at the top here. We're going to turn off the VCARV shapes. We're going to switch on the foils and we're going to switch on the outline shape. I'm just going to make the outline shape the active layer. We're just going to click into the 2D view there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run a cutout pass run outside and we're going to cut inside all of the quatrefoils and all of those trifoils. So let's select all of those vectors that we need. So I'll start off by selecting the outer vector. 
I'm going to hold down shift and we're just going to go along each one of those quatrefoils and trifoils. We're just going to select the inner vector, all of those. So you can see there we've got them all selected there. So now we can close the toolpath preview and then we can jump straight in to the profile toolpath. So the start depth for this is going to be at zero, top of the block. Cut depth, we want to cut all the way through our material. Now if you've forgotten what you set your material thickness to, you could press C and equals and the software will input that value for you. So you can see we're cutting all the way through our material that is one inch thick. Now we need to select a tool, so let's use the select option here. So in this case I'd like to use a quarter inch end mill and I could just go ahead and press OK. Ok, so I can see at the minute it's cutting that in 8 passes. So if we use the edit option here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to up my pass depth and I'm going to change that so it's now a quarter of an inch here. Okay, I'm just changing that because I know it's safe to do so for my own setup. You'd need to check your own setup in this case. So then I'd go ahead and press OK and I can see now it's going to cut that in four passes. And so where we've edited the pass step for this tool was solely for this particular toolpath that we're working with. That's why we use the edit option. If I use the select option now to go back into the tool database, you'll see under quarter inch end mill, it still has the default pass depth of an eighth of an inch in there. So let's just cancel that. So now we need to choose whether we machine on those vectors inside or outside. Now in our example, I want to cut along the outside of this cutout vector that we've got here and I want to machine on the inside of the quatrefoils and those trifoils. Now when you have vectors within vectors that you want to profile, the software will automatically presume that you want to machine on the outside of the outer vector and then on the inside of any inner vectors that you may have in the selection. And the software also knows that we'd want to cut the inner vectors first and then the outer vector last so we don't end up cutting the outer shape before we've actually finished cutting inside the part. So let's use the outside option there. I'm just going to work our way down the form. And then we're actually going to look at adding in leads to this toolpath. So we're going to check the add leads option. Okay, in this case we're going to use the circular lead and we're going to set the radius of that lead to be one inch. And we're going to have a lead length of half an inch in this case. And I'd like to do a lead out. So we'll check the lead out option and we're going to have that at an overcut distance of a quarter of an inch. Okay, and so what will happen here is this will arc into the final cutout pass half an inch away and then it will do the first pass at the pass step that we've got specified and then as it comes round it will do the overcut distance of a quarter of an inch past where the tool originally led in and then what it will do it will just arc out once it's got past that quarter of an inch and then it's going to do that for each of those passes. And so this is designed to stop the tool plunging in directly onto the edge of the part that we're actually going to be cutting out. And so really it's designed to prevent any damage to the part where the tool would otherwise plunge directly into the part vertically to the pass step that we've got set. So here we could just give this a name, so we'll just call this one Profile Cutout, and then we could simply use this option here to calculate that. So we can see we have a message here, to avoid gouging one or more leads had to be reduced in length or removed completely. Check the toolpath is still suitable for your requirements. Ok, we'll just go ahead and OK that and then we'll just maximise the 3D view and then we'll just take a look at what we've got there. So let's just zoom in and take a look at the leads that we've got there. Okay, so you see the tool will just plunge down into this what is essentially waste material here and then it's going to arc into our profile and it's going to cut that at the pass step that we've got specified and it's going to come back round and as it reaches the initial start point it's just going to come out 
by a quarter of an inch and then it's going to arc out. Then the tool will lift and it will go back over here, plunge back in, into the arc and then do the second pass and it will do that for all of those passes. And so we're only ever going to be plunging in on what is essentially the waste material. Now if we wanted to change the start position of where we actually arc in and out, we'd need to change the start point of the vector as this start point dictates the lead in and out position. So let's have a look at changing that start point. So if we just come in to the Z view there, we're going to go into the 2D view. I'm just going to use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits. And then we'll just switch the visibility off of the profile cutout. I'm just going to select that vector and then press N on the keyboard to go into node edit mode. Okay, so I'd like to change the start point so it's in the middle here. You can see the start point is down there in the lower left hand corner. So we're going to take advantage of this midpoint here by just selecting that and then using the right click option over that node to insert a point. Then we're going to right click and then we're going to use this option here to make that the start point. Okay, so now that we've changed the start point there, we could go into our profile cutout and we're just going to go with the same options. We've got our leads on and we could calculate that. Again, we're just going to OK that message to avoid gouging. It's just reduced the length um, of the lead. So we can just press OK there. Okay, so now we can see it's changed the actual start point of our lead in there. So now we can actually simulate the part and to ensure that we're cutting inside of the quatrefoils and the trifoils to begin with, we're going to look at using the run to retract option where we step through the passes where every pass step counts as a retract. So I'm just going to uncheck the animate preview and we're going to look at this option, so run to retract. So when I click there, you'll see it's cut out this first, so we've done one pass there click again, there's the second pass, again third pass, fourth pass, okay, so we know that this is going to take four passes to cut through. Okay, again I could do the same for the others, so just keep clicking, you'll see that we're just running through each individual pass. Okay, and then we've got to our last one, we've done our first pass on our profile, then our second pass, third and fourth, and then we're left with our finished part. And so to get a better idea of how our part will look, we could look at removing the waste material. So to do that, we simply double click on the material that we don't need. For example, I could double click on the inside of this quatrefoil. You'll see it's removed that. So I'll do that for the trifoils, this quatrefoil, these trifoils here, this quatrefoil, and then the outside shape. You can see we're left with our finished quatrefoil panel. So I like what we've got there. If I wanted to I could save a preview image of this just to send it over to my customer as a proof of what we're going to cut out. Okay so at this stage we're done with the tool pass and what we could do now is once we've got that approval is we could go ahead and save out those tool paths. So let's just close out here. So what we could do is go into the save toolpath form. Okay, so we're going to select the pocket circles and the outer circles. They both use the same quarter inch gen mill. And we could actually output both of those into one file. You can see them listed there. Choose your appropriate post processor and then you could simply save that toolpath. Once you've done that, you could do the same for all three toolpaths that use that half inch ball nose. And again, output all visible toolpaths to one file and then save that. And then you do the same for the other toolpaths that you've got in the list. And so that really completes this tutorial. There are guide tutorials available that go into a lot more detail on the various toolpaths that we've covered in this session that you may find useful. And these can be found on the related videos section for this tutorial on the tutorial browser. So let's go ahead and save this file. So go to File, Save As, and then in the project folder you'll see a file called Gothic Quatrefoil 2.5D Toolpaths. Press Save and you can access that from the project folder.